Hong Kong, a city synonymous with business, skyscrapers and bustling humanity. Yet living alongside the concrete and the crowds is an unexpected range of wildlife as strange as Oriental culture itself. most spectacular dragon festivals in the world are staged in Hong Kong. Dragons are a memory of creatures that vanished from Hong Kong long ago. The dragon boats are modelled on crocodiles that once menaced these waters. The festival celebrates the death of Chu Yuan, a national hero who drowned himself in protest against a corrupt government. Rice dumplings are cast symbolically into the sea to stop marine creatures from devouring his body. Even now, the rice will not be wasted. There is still prodigious marine life in Hong Kong's waters. But many animals are seriously threatened. Loss of habitat and relentless persecution are driving the turtles away. Today, they are rarely seen outside a zoo. Hong Kong is the most heavily populated place on Earth. Most of its six million people live in Kowloon and Victoria, the original cities built around the harbour. In some areas, people live eight to a room. To ease the crush, new buildings loom on every horizon. This is the familiar face of Hong Kong. But few people realise that the territory also includes more than 230 islands, as well as some 400 square miles of mainland China. Overcrowded cities are the last places you would expect to see wildlife, but Hong Kong is full of surprises. These squirrels are relative newcomers. They originated in Thailand. Hong Kong lies on the edge of the tropics, and a great range of species from both temperate and tropical lands coexist in the city. Grey parrots don't occur in the wild here, but they're one of hundreds of foreign species for sale in the street markets. Birds hold a special place in Chinese culture and are highly prized as pets. Many Chinese believe they are safer in captivity. The birds are well fed and secure from predators, but their cages are tiny and they are rarely given the chance to breed.
It's illegal to catch wild birds in Hong Kong, but they are imported from China in enormous numbers, and the trade is seriously depleting the native populations there. In 1997, the Crown Colony of Hong Kong will be handed back to the Chinese. There is concern that laws may be relaxed, and the day may come when only paper birds will fly over the city. Birds of prey, including black kites, are eaten as a delicacy in China. It's believed they have special medicinal properties, giving people strength and courage. In Hong Kong, they're protected, and soar round buildings with as much ease as their ancestors once soared round cliffs and canyons. of Hong Kong lies Victoria Harbour, the busiest port in the world. A quarter of a million ships pass through every year. Hong Kong means fragrant harbour. Years ago, a waterfall tumbled into this once unspoiled bay and flowers grew in profusion along its shores. Today, its polluted waters are far from fragrant. Scraps and dead fish provide scavenging kites with an easy meal. In early spring, high above the super tankers, they perform their spectacular courtship displays. Gulls, too, are attracted in large numbers and compete with the kites for harbour refuse. Cormorants come here to fish. Every winter, several hundred fly down from their breeding grounds in China. Trawling in the harbour is restricted. Fishing nets are a hazard to both shipping and wildlife. But with so much traffic, it's difficult to enforce the laws. In China, fishermen train captive cormorants to catch fish. But in Hong Kong, old traditions have died as the city rushes into the 21st century. Even though the harbour is polluted, surprisingly large numbers of fish live in the murky water. It's a treacherous hunting ground, but the rewards can be high. Flotsam washed up on the harbour beaches is an eyesore, but the real threat is more insidious. Besides domestic and industrial rubbish, discharged oil and waste chemicals, millions of gallons of raw sewage are flushed into the sea every day. The city's outpourings would choke most of the harbour's wildlife to death 
if the tide didn't take the bulk of it out to sea. Young fish are the first to suffer and latest research shows that stocks are dwindling. Several species of fish-eating bird, including reef egrets, live in the harbour and their existence is now threatened. Some are already desperate. A kingfisher tries in vain to rid its feathers of oil. The cormorants commute daily to the harbour. The city never sleeps. If anything, it's busier at night. At dusk, the birds fly west where they can roost in peace. When the city celebrates, it does so in style. Bright lights and business opportunities attract visitors from all over the world. Visitors that are numbered in millions. After dark, the streets are a blaze of neon. But away from the limelight, it's not just people who are out for a night on the town. The toke is the largest gecko in the world. A full-grown adult is 10 inches long and has a voracious appetite. Oblivious to the dramas being played out in the shadows, the people of Hong Kong flood onto the streets for a night's entertainment. The most popular venue is the Happy Valley Racecourse, which lies in the heart of the city. The site was originally a swamp, a mythical haunt of dragons. For centuries, malaria-carrying mosquitoes, tigers, crocodiles, and even elephants kept people at bay. But in the mid-40s, the swamp was drained, its reeds replaced by floodlit turf. The races are run at night to avoid the intense daytime heat and humidity. Thousands of people flood through the gates and millions of dollars exchange hands at every meeting. A great deal of this local wealth has been lavished on preserving historic buildings and works of art but all too little on conserving what's left of Hong Kong's natural heritage. Now times are changing, and the Royal Hong Kong Jockey Club is one of a growing number of local organisations taking a greener view of the environment. Even this unlikely location has its wild residents.
In a city where tall trees are scarce, the racecourse floodlights make an acceptable substitute. Magpies build bulky stick nests and the limited space on this man-made structure is hotly contested. Black kites pay regular visits to the racecourse. They're the most successful bird of prey on Earth because they thrive in human environments. The breeding season has begun for the kites too. A hectic harbour seems an inappropriate place to raise young, but in the middle of the shipping lanes there is an unexpected sanctuary. Stonecutter's Island has changed little since the British first colonised Hong Kong. It's used exclusively by the military as a high security site. Access is strictly limited, so for the most part it's undisturbed. The kites take advantage of this. Natural nesting materials are limited in the city, but there's no shortage of plastic and paper. The female alone incubates the eggs. She now faces six weeks of sitting and waiting. Considering its location, Stonecutter's Island is remarkably tranquil, but life isn't always completely peaceful. The armed forces use the island as a training ground, but the soldiers seldom leave the roads. Stonecutter's Island dominates the harbour. It was heavily fortified during both world wars. Now the bunkers and gun emplacements are derelict, but not deserted. The island is famous for its snakes. At the end of World War II, the surrendering Japanese army released hundreds of these reptiles, which they'd kept for research into antidotes for snake bite. Violet whistling thrush chicks don't cry for food. They keep silent to conceal their whereabouts from predators. They rely instead on their bright yellow mouths to attract the attention of their parents. In 1997, when the British forces march off the island for the last time, its wildlife will no longer be protected by a military presence. Already there are plans for a recreation complex on the island and a sewage plant. Hong Kong's wildlife faces a constant battle, competing with man for every inch of space. The International Airport is near the city centre. It's the only wide open space left near the harbour and it attracts some unusual travellers.
Kentish and Oriental plovers fly in alongside hundreds of representatives from multinational companies who come to Hong Kong to do business each week. These birds are in transit, migrants who use the runway as a convenient resting place. Thousands of birds break their journey here. Hong Kong lies on the main migratory route between Siberia and Australasia, and the birds use the territory as a staging post between northern breeding grounds and winter quarters further south. But a host of other wild creatures spend their entire lives here, permanent residents in the land of dragons. Once a year, Hong Kong's dragons run wild through the city streets. These spectacular performances are designed to please Tin Hao, the goddess of the sea. The fishermen hope she will reward them with good catches in the coming season. The fishermen will have to excel themselves in their devotions because the seas round Hong Kong are steadily being poisoned. Hong Kong's coastline stretches for 500 miles. For years, its beaches teemed with life. Now, most are deserted and all of them under threat. Ting Kok is one of the few remaining healthy shores. Mud skippers are fish that can breathe out of water. They're still sufficiently common to compete for space with resident crabs. The strange acrobatics of these dragon-like creatures serve as a territorial display and one of courtship at the same time. Several species of crab inhabit the beach, each with their own technique of intimidating rivals and attracting a mate.
When the tide has gone out, thousands of soldier crabs emerge from the sand until the whole seashore appears to be crawling. They march up and down the beach in great armies, sifting the sand for edible material. When the tide turns, the crabs retreat. It will soon be time to disappear below ground again. The grey rumped sandpiper is a long distance migrant. It stops off in Hong Kong to refuel and crabs make a welcome meal. In response to the turning tide, the crabs corkscrew out of sight in seconds. This crab has left it a little late and its struggle has not gone unnoticed. The sand octopus lives inside an empty clam shell. It's one of the smallest of its kind but to a soldier crab, it's still a deadly enemy. Eight tentacles equipped with rows of suction pads ensure that there's no escape. are high and the moon is full, giant king crabs head for a remote sandy beach on Hong Kong's western shore. In 18 inches of water, the female lays and buries her eggs in the sand. At the same time, the male, clasped to her back, fertilizes them. King crabs are not crustaceans, as their name suggests, but ancient members of the spider family. The larger females are often 16 inches across, about the size of a large frying pan. This pair could be one of the last to breed in Hong Kong. A new road runs along the west coast, opening up the area. Before long, hordes of day trippers will descend on these deserted beaches. They will almost certainly drive the king crabs away, and any which do return will stand little chance. The Chinese eat the crabs and their eggs as an aphrodisiac. Twenty years ago, the population of Hong Kong rarely spent a day on the beach, but the rising standards of living have given people more money and leisure. In midsummer, they now flock to the seaside.
Sand and sea quickly become strewn with litter that people do their best to ignore. Several beaches are now so polluted that they've been closed to the public. The future for Hong Kong's coastline looks bleak, but in the hills beyond, unexpected stretches of unspoiled countryside still exist. Hong Kong sits just below the Tropic of Cancer. In summer, the temperature can soar to over 40 degrees Celsius, yet the land is surprisingly lush. This is because the hot summer months coincide with the typhoon season. Clouds blow in from the Pacific Ocean laden with moisture. When the warm, damp air is forced up over the rolling hills, the vapor condenses and a tropical storm breaks. Streams become tumbling torrents, and numerous waterfalls find a new lease of life. The deluges rarely last long, and the floods subside as quickly as they rise. But surviving in such unpredictable conditions calls for some special adaptations. Hong Kong cascade frog has suction pads on the end of each toe so it can cling to slippery rocks. The green cascade frog is another species found only in these mountain streams. Below the falls, the water is turbulent, but clear and well oxygenated. The zebra loach is one of the few fish which is adapted to these conditions. It is in fact so specialized it can't survive anywhere else. Its lower fins are enlarged and flattened to form suckers on the underside of its body. Securely attached, it creeps over the boulders, grazing on the algae. Long-armed shrimps wedge themselves in cracks and crevices when the river is in spate. Their elongated forelegs are used to prise debris from beneath rocks, and during territorial squabbles, their pincers become effective weapons. Relatively few people in Hong Kong venture away from the confines of the cities. The idea of mountain crabs and monkeys living alongside each other just beyond the outskirts 
must seem almost as unlikely as the idea of finding live dragons. Macaques were probably native here, but were wiped out many years ago by the Chinese. The present populations are descendants of subsequently released animals, which established themselves in the wild. Like most monkeys, macaques are inquisitive and intelligent creatures. It's not long before they lose their fear of human beings, and they quickly become streetwise. The local people enjoy feeding them, even though adult males have a reputation for biting. In recent years, they've become a nuisance in some picnic spots. They readily accept free handouts and soon discover the best sources of food. Even crab-eating macaques rarely bother with more natural food these days. But in the forest, it's another story. Mountain crabs eat grasshoppers when they can catch them. The wood spider's fangs are large and deliver a painful and paralyzing bite. This grasshopper avoided one predator only to leap straight into the arms of another. It's after the victim is securely trussed that the spider bites. Stunned by its deadly venom, the grasshopper is quite helpless. Forty feet below ground, life follows a different rhythm. The hills are riddled with disused mine shafts, some within two miles of the city centre. These bent-winged bats were only recently discovered in Hong Kong. The temperature in the caves stays at around 10 degrees Celsius. The bats huddle together to conserve heat and energy. Bats are regarded as symbols of good luck in China, and it's one of the few places in the world where they're not persecuted. Once, these hills were covered by thick forests, but centuries of cutting and burning have reduced them to grasslands.
wild boar have coped well with the changing conditions, but the hot summer air can bring the smell of danger. The grasses are tinder dry and hill fires are a constant threat to ground dwelling animals. A new road forms an effective fire break. The boar instinctively senses that it's safer on the other side. These drongos may appear to be playing with fire, but in fact they're hunting. Small reptiles and insects fleeing the flames make easy prey. Thousands of trees are destroyed each year, and hill fires often blaze out of control, threatening property as well as wildlife. April is especially bad for hill fires as it also coincides with the grave sweeping ceremony. The symbolic burning of lucky money, candles and joss sticks can all provide the fatal spark. Ceremonies held in the city seldom get out of hand, but families traditionally travel to the hills to celebrate, and that's when the countryside can turn to ashes. Smoke can suffocate an animal like the ferret badger in its burrow. This one was lucky. All around Hong Kong, the landscape is changing. Tower blocks dominate today's horizon, leaving less and less room for wildlife. Not even the mountains are safe. A few sticks of dynamite are all that's required to reduce a hillside to building rubble. Space is at a premium. Once deserted bays and inlets are being reclaimed for development.
Sadly, the sewage systems of even the most modern blocks are often little better than those of the traditional villages. The government has made pollution control a top priority, but it faces an overwhelming challenge. Sooner or later, the domestic, agricultural and industrial wastes end up in the sea, creating Hong Kong's most pressing environmental problem, marine pollution. The effect on the marine environment is devastating. Oyster beds are increasingly contaminated by sewage and industrial effluent. The traditional livelihood of these clam gatherers is threatened as the risks from food poisoning grow. With each high tide, polluted water now flushes through the mangroves and marshes, threatening all the animals which live there. The Mai Po marshes lie in the far northwest corner of the colony on the eastern bank of the Pearl River beside the Chinese border. They are the last marshes left in Hong Kong and the only protected wetlands in southern China. They are a vital staging ground for hundreds of thousands of birds migrating between Siberia and Australasia. Plans to dump toxic chemicals close to the marsh further threaten the birds, but moves are afoot to save this and other wild places in Hong Kong. The government has designated 40% of the territory as country parkland where plants and animals are protected. But the rising tide of urbanization, the levels of pollution and the growing population may prove insurmountable problems. At present, the border fence with China spans the marshes. Soon, it will lose its significance. In just a few years, Hong Kong will be handed back to the Chinese, and the fate of its wildlife will become their responsibility. Will they rise to the challenge? Only time will tell.